Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be working on some gorgeous tree projects. I know it's still early, but I wanted to bring you some amazing ideas for the upcoming holiday and winter season. It is still super hot here in Missouri, so I want to say thank you to Hi Cozy. They have sent me over an ice maker. I'm going to show you all about this ice maker throughout this video, so stay tuned. For our first project today, I'm going to be using a piece of salvage from a bed frame I found by the side of the road. And I've got one of these, um, I think this is like a, a mill, a food mill. And the pestles sell amazing for me, but when I try to sell them with the food mills, they just sit on my website forever. So I've taken this and I simply just bent the handle back and forth, back and forth until it came off. Now we're going to create some trees. I used my miter saw to cut the spindles to the height that I wanted for my trees and I will save these pieces for another project. I didn't want to leave the handles on these mills so I simply just started bending them back and forth until the rivets were loose enough to pop off. Then I used my hammer just to smooth out any of the metal that might be a little sharp after popping off the rivets. For paint today, I am using DIY Aviary, which is my absolute favorite green color. And I have got my feather brush here. I want a nice light touch because as I paint this, you notice the paint is kind of coming through the holes and I don't want to make a huge mess. I do give the entire piece two coats of paint inside and out. Once that paint has dried, it is time to seal them up. I'm using DIY clear wax and a paper towel and just giving them a nice, even light coat of wax. Now you'll notice some of the paint is still in the holes. If that bothers you, you can take a little tool, um, something pokey and poke the paint out. A little bit of DIY decrepit dust is going to highlight the nooks and crannies and give these a more antiqued look. If this paint bothers you in here, you could always like take your Cricut tool or a toothpick, just go through and poke those holes. It's actually kind of satisfying. <laughs> what do y'all think about this first project? I am loving the antique -y look of these upcycled trees. And I simply just sat the food mill on top of the spindle. There was no nails or screws or anything required. Then as the holiday season is over, you could take your food mill off of your spindle and use that spindle somewhere else in your decor. I also thought you could flip this food mill upside down, maybe hang a little jute on it and stick some floral in it for the spring. Let's go ahead and open up this beautiful ice maker. Thanks again to Hi Cozy for sending it over to me. I have been struggling with ice in this house. There's not enough room in my freezer and my ice cube trays honestly were all broken. They were making a huge mess. So when I was offered this ice maker, I was super excited. It comes with nice detailed instructions, some great ideas of what you can do with your ice, a cute little scoop. And then I got a little worried when I started seeing all the parts, but you can either fill this manually with water or hook it up to a water system. I'm gonna choose to do a manual fill since I do rent this house. I'm doing it manually. I just need to make sure the drain plug is secure here. So easy to set up and now I will fill it with some filtered water. As it makes the ice and the ice melts, it melts back down into the water reservoir and it will make that ice over and over again. So you'll have an endless supply. Back here, there's a switch. There's this. Aha. So it said it takes about five minutes to start producing ice, kind of depending on your water temperature. It's got the instructions here on the front. This is just a little film you can peel right off. The random three color flashing means it's now making the ice. How awesome is this? All right, I came downstairs after putting on some workout clothes and look, oh my gosh, those little pellets look so stinking satisfying. I'm not even an ice cruncher. Drop me a comment, let me know, are you an ice cruncher? 
And y'all, one hour later after my workout, I come upstairs and I have a full container of ice. Look how little and tiny and delicious. I will be sure to drop all the information down in the description box below so you can go check out and grab a high cozy ice maker for yourself. I do really enjoy mine so far. I picked these little trees up for a buck. It looks like somebody tried to flock them with some fuzz. We're just gonna get that off of there and get these fluffed up a bit before our next step. This is my life. I don't even take the tags off my thrifted stuff. Oh boy. All right, let's get majority of this fluffing off of here. These little trees can look kind of cheapy, but I love using a powder flocking to give them a high-end look, inexpensive and quickly. This is by far my favorite brand of flocking I have bought so far. First year I bought it on Amazon, they had a small bag. Second year, they didn't, but I've had this a long time and it is still good. So. I will drop the link down below. If you would like to grab some flocking for yourself, you can use my affiliate code and I will get a small little kickback from that and I appreciate it as always. But I'm going to flock these trees up now for a more high-end look. It is so easy to do. So I'm gonna spray the tree. I like to use my continual mist bottle here so it doesn't get too over soaked. Make sure you get the top of the branches where you want the snow to stick and not just the bottom. Pull some of this snow on. I put it in a bowl, kind of start to shake the bowl back and forth as the snow falls. And then you need to spray the snow as it's falling for best adhesion. I'm going to use some wire cutters and cut these off of their wooden base that way I can put them down into my spindle pieces these are the pieces of spindle that I saved from first project using my drill bit I just drilled down into the spindle and then a little bit of Gorilla uh, clear grip adhesive down into the hole to make sure that my trees stay nice and snug once I put them in I just love the way that these come out every single time. The spindle base makes them look much more high end and I love a flocked Christmas tree. Drop me a comment, let me know what you think about this makeover. To find any of the paint and products I'm using or to purchase my flips, you can visit upcycledbybree.com. Everybody knows the bottle brush tree, right? We've put them in spool threads, we've put them in bottles, we've done a lot of things with them. But at the end of the season, I got these amazing planters with all of this natural patina on them. And I don't just wanna store them away until next year because they are too amazing for that. So I figured we could stick the Christmas trees in these beautiful planters and get some use out of them over the winter as well. Such a quick and simple high-end makeover. A little hot glue and some floral foam down into my pot. And then I clip off the wooden base of these as well. I always save those wooden bases for other projects. A little more hot glue on top of my floral foam and I press the tree down. The other great thing about only using hot glue, if I wanted to pop the trees out at the end of the season, these planters could be used for plants in the spring. What do y'all think about my bottle brush tree upcycle? I am loving the terracotta planters and I think they would work beautifully for winter as well. I picked up these rusty votive holders from the Chanel thrift store, but I knew right away that I wanted to turn them into trees. So I snipped off the heart and the house off of the top of them and cut a couple of spindles down to a trunk size. 
a little bit of Gorilla wood glue onto the spindle. And then I flipped the votive holder upside down and simply placed it on the spindle. There was a flat piece inside where the candle would have gone and it sits on the spindle perfectly. I encourage you to look for items at the thrift store that you can upcycle into new items. Would you have thought to use these as industrial looking trees? Let me know in the comments below. I think these are my favorite today. For the last couple of bottle brush trees that I have left, since they were smaller, I just went ahead and popped them in a couple of thread spools. And then also I had some stamps that I got from a recent church garage sale. And all I did with those was drill a little hole in them with my drill. And I did use my metal clippers to clip the bases off as well. A little hot glue down into the stamp pop the tree right in and I love the adorable industrial look that it gives. Let me know which one you like better, the spools or the stamps. I hope y'all enjoyed today's tree flipping video. And again, a big thank you to Hi Cozy for sending me over the ice maker. For all of the links that y'all will need, including my paint and products, my flips, and the wonderful ice maker I featured today, you can visit the description box down below this video. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss any new content. Also hit the thumbs up button and send this video over to a friend. All those little things help my channels continue to grow and I appreciate the support so much. Until next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends. It's walking time. It's time to flock.